I'd like to say that I'm surprised, but in reality, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not. If you've been watching our special coverage of Indy 500 practice all week, you might have heard me say that Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing has a history of not qualifying well for the Indianapolis 500, but they typically race better than how they qualify. But but with like 30 with 34 cars in it for the 33 car fill, this is certainly a lot more pressure than, the, than that they were hoping for. Been, been in the last row shootout today is is not ideal. It's a high pressure situation, and if you're Bobby Bobby Rahal, Lanigan or, or Letterman, you have to be really really concerned uh, about today because they have a because there's a 75 percent chance that you can see one one of their drivers going 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 home here. And then when you look at all the changes that they made over the off season, bringing in someone from Formula One bringing in someone who has over 30 years of experience working at Honda and, and, and you make all of these personnel changes to try to get yourself on par with the top teams in the NTT IndyCar series. And this is the result you get with your car struggling for speed. And if you look at the other race we had earlier this year at Texas Motor Speedway on the oval, Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan racing was slow there as well. It, 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 it seems like their, their road and street cars program is pretty much hit, hit or miss right now. But the oval program we saw at Texas Motor Speedway, they were, they, they were in trouble they were in trouble at the open test, and they're still in trouble to, to, to today. So, Jack Harvey, Christian Lingard, Graham Ray Hall, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of nerves on on their time and stand because this is not an ideal situation to be in. Now, Kobe, you hit the nail on the head there. This isn't about yesterday, or this isn't about this week. This is something that I think you know isn't much of a surprise, unfortunately, uh, for Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan racing fans, and and for IndyCar fans that have been watching this team. And I think we got to remind people, you know, this this team is not, you know, a small team necessarily in, in the IndyCar series. They're, we don't consider them to be part of the big three of the Penske, Ganassi's, Andretti's. I think I guess McLaren is now maybe we've got a big four with how well they've been running over the last couple of years. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're not at that level yet, but they're not a, a shoestring budget backmarker team. They're a team that's won this race before in very recent history, I might add, with Takuma Sato just a few years ago. Um, they're, they're a team that has been in contention here in very recent history. They're a team that, you know, is capable of winning races and I would even argue competing for championships most years. Um, and, and Graham Ray Hall is a, a seasoned veteran here. He's been coming to the Speedway for a decade and a half. Um, you know, this this is mind boggling, uh, you know, to, to see how many re- how much amount of resources that this team has brought in, like you were mentioning, Kobe, to try to improve their program and continue to take the fight to the top teams in this series. And to find themselves here, I mean, if Stingray Rob had found just a little bit more pace on his last run yesterday, we'd be talking about there being four Ray Hall Lerman landing and racing cars at the Indianapolis 500 and four cars that aren't locked in after day one of qualifications. And Ray Hall would have swept out those four spots and be guaranteed to have a car go home. Their only car that is in the field, Catherine Legg, and phenomenal job by Catherine Legg, by the way, being away from the speedway for 10 years, coming back and guaranteeing herself a starting spot in next week's race. She was the 30th car, you know, so it's it's not like she was at least up in the middle of the pack. All of their cars, it seems to be team wide flaws that are bogging them down and putting them in danger here of, of sending one car home. And, you know, if you're Ray Hall Letterman, if you're looking at this this program here, you might think to yourself, you know, if, if McLaren beat us, if Ganassi beat us, you know what? We, we can look ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what? Fair enough. They're the top teams right now. They nailed the setup the best and we can take next week and practice to get our setups closer to where they are and compete with them on race day. But, you know, you, you were out qualified by, again, no disrespect, but these teams don't have the budgets you have, much less the big teams in this series. I mean, Abel Motorsports coming down here with, with a single car with R.C. Enerson. I I, I got to apologize to R.C. Enerson. I thought it was a bump day lock, uh, but he comes out here. He's he's safe. Punko Salinger Racing, there's not going to be a, a bump day drama with them back like there was in 2019 when they bumped out McLaren. I mean, th- those teams are in the field, yet Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing has a very good chance, a 75% chance, like you guys mentioned, at sending one of their cars home. It's, it's, on, it's approaching Andretti 2011, Penske 95 levels of failure here if they end up having to send one of their cars home because it's, it's unbelievable that we're, that we're sitting here talking about this with a, a team-wide flaw and, and error here this massive, given the resources that they've put in, the fact that they're still not – in, in the middle of the pack, even let alone competing for the fast 12 or a spot up there. It, it's, it's crazy that we're, we're sitting here talking about this, but at the same time, I suppose it's not all that surprising. 
it's just crazy to think. I especially will say a year ago, I would not say Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan will be in this situation. The way this year has been going, they've just been struggling. I would not anticipate three out of their four. And if I was, I would think Catherine Leg being so long from the CIA, but Jack Harvey, Christian Lungar, and Graham Ray Hall, this is an absolute disaster. Even if they get all three in, I still think that organization will be relieved. They're not going home, but still probably feeling horrible that we don't have that great of a car. We don't seem that competitive. Grant is a long 500-mile race. The chances of winning, especially from the front row, very, very slim. Follow-up question for you all, starting with you, Ben. Ray Hall, Lerman, Langan, they get their tire front back row, let's just say. So none of them are going home. But is those, any of those drivers, Lundgaard, Harvey, or even Grand Ray Hall, could their time driving for Ray Hall, Lerman, Langan be coming to an end by the end of the season or maybe earlier? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if we could go that far based on just one bad Indianapolis 500 qualifications here. Like, like we we're mentioning before we came on the show, and like you were just mentioning, Joe as well. You know, Christian Lungard, you know, just had a shot to win last week on the road course configuration here at IMS. You know, so you know the team, the team I think has some positive things going for them right now with their drivers. Obviously, none of those things are are being seen this weekend here. Um, I, I don't see them giving up on Lungard. Uh, you know, just because, you know, let's say he's the one that fails to qualify here. I don't, I don't think that that would, you know, cost him his job or anything. Um, but I, I'll say this much, you know, about Graham Rahal here. And I, by the way, I don't think Graham Rahal is going to be the one that gets bumped. I know Kobe uh, predicted that in our, in our group chat that he might be the one. I think they're going to give, you know, all the, the setup that Catherine Lake had to get into the 500. I think they're going to prioritize Graham's car and, and get him in. But I think that, you know, if you, if you're Graham Rahal here and you look at this situation, there have been rumors swirling that he might be interested in going down to an Indy 500 only schedule in the not too distant future. There, you know, you've got to remember that he hasn't always driven for his family team. He drove for Ganassi for a little while. Newman Haas is where he got his first win uh, in his, I, I suppose, first Indy car start. I know they've since merged the old uh, champ car records, but that was a phenomenal win that really put him on the map there uh, when he was just a teenager. So he hasn't always driven for his family's team. Maybe he would go look elsewhere. Um, you know, I, I think there would certainly be some changes that have to be made because clearly the changes that have been made of this program, at least on the Indy 500 side, are not working. And, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So you, you would have to change something up, I'd imagine, if you're the right health team, whether or not that's putting a different driver in the car as early as before the season's over. I think it's a little bit early to tell. But I think if if this team does not get all their cars in, even if they do get all their cars in, like you mentioned, Joe, and they sweep the bottom row of the grid, that that failure needs to be a wake-up call to everybody in this organization that something needs to turn around, something has to change, because this clearly isn't working for them. For, for sure, Ben. I totally agree, agree with everything you, you, you said. And, and look at, looking at the three drivers here, I'm going I'm gonna to start off with, with Jack Harvey. We've been talking about him a lot this season, how he needs to have a big year. And when, and, and when they switched him over from the high V ride to the ride that has several RLL associate sponsors, that was a big wake-up call for, for him since Christian Lungard has a lot more upside than, than Harvey does. Putting Lungard in that high V car would – well, you know, give them a, a better chance of being more competitive to be seen on TV and all of that. While Harvey had a big struggle last, last season with RLL and the IMS road course is typically one of his better circuits on the IndyCar schedule. Last week had a good qualifying effort. Lucky was going to have a good result, but ended up fi- having a really disappointing finish. And now, and and now this to be in the last row shootout. If if if, if Jack Harvey is, is the one who gets bumped. About in this year's Indy 500, I think he would be the RLL driver who'd be in the most trouble and not coming back next year. I'm not sure if if that would mean a dismissal early early in before we end the 2023 season. I don't think it it, it may not cost him his job, but I think Harvey is certainly on the shortest leash of all the RLL drivers. Christian Lungard, I think he ha- he has he has plenty of potential if he decides to leave. I think it would be because of grass is green or somewhere else to try to go to a more competitive team to really allow him to, to, to truly show his talents and, and, and Graham, and Graham Ray Hall 
Ben, you mentioned all the rumors that are swirling about him and, and, and his future. I know he made some comments over the weekend that kind of rubbed some people the wrong way, thinking that he's a, thinking that he's better than the car that he's given. That if he if you put him in a better car, that he'd be able to show what he can do. And it would certainly be interesting if he if he decides to to leave his father's team for a more competitive ride elsewhere if it opens up. 